What's going guys? After watching this video, you'll be able to get every single probability questions that show up on the SAT, correct? Probability is one of the easiest questions to get right and get that extra boost on your SAT score because it doesn't really require any technical concept or you don't really have to memorize any formulas. Most people end up missing these questions because they don't really know exactly what to look for when it comes to a probability question, when in reality, you only need to look for these two things. And those two things are exactly what we're going to go over in this video so that you won't miss another probability question and get that quick boost on your SAT math score. So make sure you stick till the end, master two things to look for on these probability questions. And if you're ready to get started, smash the like button and let's get straight into this video. So what are the two things that you need to know about these probability questions? You need to understand exactly what they're testing you on first. So what they're testing you on is your first, your ability to understand the context in which the probability question is given. How these questions are structured is that they give you a scenario and they're asking you to find a probability of some event happening. And to find that probability, it's really important for you to understand exactly what is going on within the context. So probability in a nutshell is this. Probability is literally just target over total. And what I mean by target over total is this. The probability of certain event happening among the probability of all the other events happening, okay? So total is going to be every single possible option out there and your target is going to be what you want happening out of those, all of those options. So that's what you need to know for probability. We're gonna put these two things into action, okay? So let's look at this question right here. The question says the table above lists the result of survey of random sample of 250 high school students high school seniors and freshmen. Each student selected one subject that was his or her favorite, okay? So the question over here says, if one senior from a sample is selected at random, which of the following is the closest to the probability that the student selected signs as his or her favorite high school subject, okay? So remember, the probability is literally just target over total. And as long as you can identify those two things, you are going to be set. And you always want to start off by identifying your total first. So what's our total going to be here? So if you look at this question, it says if one of the seniors from the sample is selected, right? So we're picking a student from all of the seniors. We're not picking them from every single student in high school. We're only picking them from seniors, which means your total is going to be made up of seniors and not include any high school freshmen. So if you look over here, it says the total number of senior is going to be 120. So our total is going to be 120. And what is our target going to be? If you look at the question, it says, which of the following is closest to the probability that students selected science as his or her favorite high school subject, right? So there's English, fine arts, math, history, and science. There's all these topics out there. And we're looking for the probability that the student's favorite is going to be science. So in here, it says there are 38 students among 120 students, right? So our target, which is going to be science as favorite, and that is going to be 38. So what is this going to be? Take out your calculator. It's going to be 38 divided by 120, which is going to be 31.66. Okay, that's going to be 0.316 repeating, right? And if you look at it, there's nothing that looks like that. But if you round it, it's going to be 0.32. And we can round this answer because the question specifically tells us that which of the following is the closest. Remember, you can't always round your answer answers on the SAT. Like if you round it, you're actually screwed. But if the question specifically tells you that you have to round it, that's the only time you round it. To get more information on this rounding stuff on the SAT, watch the video right here because that is actually very important. Most people end up missing more questions because they round their answers when they are not supposed to. So after watching this video, recommend watching that video right there. It's going to be linked in the description box down below. So what's our answer going to be? Our answer is going to be C. Does that make sense? See, literally all we have to do for these probability questions is to understand the context. Okay, understand the context and correctly identify what the target is and what the total is. And if you can do that, you are going to be set. Let's go to the next question. So let's take a look at this question, pause the video, read it out and see if you can solve it on your own. And when you're ready, let's play the video again. Okay, let's go over the question. It says the table above summarizes the result of 200 law school graduates who took the bar exam. Okay, if one of the surveys graduates who passed the bar exam is chosen at random for an interview, what's the probability, blah, what's the probability that the person chosen did not take the review course, right? So guys, as always, probability is all about correctly identifying your target and total. And we're gonna go with total first. So what is our total going to be based on? So the question over here tells us that if one of survey graduates who passed the bar exam is chosen at random, right? So there are those who passed the bar exam and there are those who did not pass the exam, right? And we are only selecting one person who actually passed the exam, right? Which means we're not gonna consider these things because we're not even talking about people who didn't pass. We're only talking about people who actually passed the exam. So these are the people and these are going to be our total possible options. And how many people are there? There's 18 and seven, which is going to be 25. 
So our, our total is going to be 25. From 25, question is asking us to find what's the probability that the person chosen did not take the review course, right? So review course, there's those who took the review course and who did not take the review course. And we're looking for the probability that person did not take the review. So that's going to be seven, right? Seven out of 25 people did not take the review course, which means our probability is going to be seven over 25. And our answer is going to be choice B right there. B right here. Guys, these probability questions are really not that hard. Most people end up missing them because they read the questions and they incorrectly identify what the target is and what the total is. Most, uh, most common cases that they look at the question and you have to consider only those who passed the bar exam, but people consider everyone and they incorrectly identify what the total is, which in return screws you over and gets the question wrong. So whenever you see a probability question, my quick tip is that just take a deep breath, be calm and look at the question and read the question slowly and then you'll be able to get them right. So let's summarize exactly what we went over today in this video. In order for you to get these probability questions right, you have to first understand the context. And that's because probability questions are testing your ability to correctly identify the target and total, okay? So to identify the target and total correctly, you have to understand the context completely. So take a deep breath, be relaxed, be calm, and read the question carefully and correctly identify the target and the total, and you should be able to get every single one of these problems right without any trouble. Okay. So I hope everything in this video made sense. However, if something was iffy or you would like more detailed explanation or you would just like more additional practice on these topics, then go to the link in the description box down below. It's going to take you to a private lecture where it gives you a full lecture on probability even in detailed steps and also give you additional practice questions to do afterward to see if you really understood these probability concepts. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. We only have about one week left until the December 2019 SAT. So make sure you guys grind it out, master all these topics, and you will see an improvement on your next SAT. If you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you leave it down in the comment box down below. And as always, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.